Top ranks Bob Arum says Guillermo El Chical Rigandao is full of shit and he's running from Lomachenko. Stay tuned. Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest of boxing. Thank you all to the donations. I've got a lot recently. Um, everything counts, and it's going to a good cause. We're going to keep this thing moving. Shout out to the people on Patreon, and also the Super Chats. Now, let's get into it. Shout out to my dude, Hoop Jab. He's been working. He was covering the Pacquiao Horn fight. He has an exclusive link in the description, an interview with Bob Arum, and I just watched it, and I had to make this follow-up video. Top ranks Bob Arum. He was he was asked about a potential Lomachenko versus Rigandau fight, and Bob Arum. I'm going to paraphrase, but again, you guys can go check the link in the description. This is pretty accurate to what he's saying. He says Rigandau is full of shit. Those are his words, and as soon as it comes time to really negotiate then all sorts of different changes and demands and requests come about. So he says, he says, Rigando, every time we, we go to really try to negotiate, then he starts running like a thief from Lomachenko. And that's coming from Bob Arum. Now, this is the thing, man. In the age of social media, with all this stuff, like I follow a lot of different people. I don't even really follow many people in the boxing world. I mean, I follow some, I'm not trying to act like stuck up or whatever, but on social media, I follow all types of like models and just whatever. But even the celebrity bro like bloggers, cause I like to stay what's like, stay tuned, like, oh, Jay-Z's album drop or see what's up with, we just, you know what I mean? Pop culture and current events and stuff, DJ academics, people like that. And there's a lot of celebrity bloggers that I, um, that I follow or whatnot, and even when they like, there's this one, I think it what's it called, famous ENT or something like that, um, and they have like these gossip columns where they break these these stories or somebody hits them up in their DM and says, oh, this person has a sex tape or this and that, you know, what I mean, just some love and hip hop type of stuff. But the point being is, even with those those blogger style sites, the one that I'm thinking of, they have this, they call it T, like the drama, the gossip, the scoop, they call it the T. And then they show receipts. That's the most important thing. So if they're accusing, they're like, oh, Chris Brown, he's caught cheating. We show receipts. We show proof. Ba basically showing proof that then I just randomly threw Chris Brown. That didn't really happen. But hypothetically, if Chris Brown had a celebrity girlfriend and they caught him creeping, then they're going to show you the proof of what they're alleging him. And they're going to show you like a DM or j there's another one going around like I guess Drake got some girl pregnant and then they show you like text messages from that girl and Drake and FaceTime you know what I mean they show you that so to me this is what I don't understand about boxing in this age why is there no proof of anything like maybe you guys should do just like you do a face off get Guillermo Rigondeaux's people and then get Lomachenko's people and air it do, do like a FaceTime live stream now I know that's not normally the way that negotiations are handled, but if you really and truly want to make a fight and you want everything to be transparent, maybe you could do something like that. Just open it up. I'm not saying do every single negotiation like that, but fights like this need to be made. And you're getting two contrasting styles. It always happens like this, where fighter A side is saying one thing and the fighter B side is saying the other thing. Like Rigandau is relentless right now on social media. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, he really and truly wants to fight. But I just, I have a hard time believing me personally that a person is going to go that above and beyond on some Cannon Briggs stuff. Let's go champ. Yeah. I said, yeah. Like do all this stuff. If they really don't want to fight, whether you think they want to fight for the paycheck and they think they'll lose or whatever like Cannon Briggs. I don't think he did all of that to Klitschko to not get the fight. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he was stalking David Hay and touching his curls. Look at his curls. <laughs> like all that. I don't think he was doing all of that to tuck his tail and not take the fight. However, 
This is a big however. I don't think he's going to sell himself short and just to get the fight, he's going to fight for scraps or peanuts or some raw deal where he, you know what I'm saying, if it's pay-per-view or something in Sky Sports and he's X'd out of it, I don't believe that. So, you know what I mean? It's real hard for me to believe some of these things that I'm hearing. Like Bob Arum, like why is Rick and I full of shit? What, show us, show us what's happening. Like show us, I know they're saying he had an injury and stuff like that, but he's not really talking about an injury. You know what I mean? So it's like these guys, why don't you guys find some way to make this stuff public? If you can't handle it behind closed doors, like where it's he said, she said shit. Like I said, even the celebrity gossip bloggers, they show you proof of what they're saying. They're like, oh, this, what's that Orlando dude? The one that's tripping. He was in a major pain. I forgot his name. He was on That's So Raven. But anyway, they're like, oh, he's on drugs. Here's the proof. And they show a video of him on a crack pipe or meth or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's real out here. So that's that's what I don't understand. If Lomachenko, if you truly want the fight and you represent Lomachenko and Rigondeaux is publicly at least saying he truly wants to fight, then they're, and the fans want it. Because you go to, I went to Lomachenko's page today and it was crazy. It was like, Rigo, fight Rigo. Come on, fight Rigo, cherry picker. Why are you fighting Madiago? Fight Rigo. So if if two people really want it, like they're, pub, like they're publicly saying, and Bob Arum, what he's saying is true, like there has to be some kind of middle ground where it's not this he said, she, he said, she said junk. And this is the other thing I have a problem with. I had a friend and they were the type of friend where... You know, friends, they tell you problems and whatnot. And this girl was the type that it was like she was always the victim in every story, every single story. Like, oh, I got cheated on. Oh, this like, like, OK, you can't control something like that. But work issues, issues where you, you stop talking to your best friend. It gets to a point where when somebody doesn't admit when they're at fault for anything and it's always somebody else's fault, that makes me question the logistics and it makes me question the reality of the situation because I don't feel like there's anybody like I'm not perfect they call me ego but I'm far from perfect you know what I mean and I don't view myself like that but there like half of like I would say probably 95% of the illest shit I've ever been through I was caught I caused that either I caused it directly or my actions caused it or even maybe just being around the wrong crowd caused it and the decisions I made to participate and I was like a participant and, and you know what I mean kicking it with the wrong people or whatever but usually it all comes back to me all the, like the craziest stuff I've ever went through in life bad decisions uh, bills what, whatever it is so wh what I'm saying to you guys is this like this Lomachenko if Lomachenko really wants to fight his team really wants to fight Igis really wants to fight I just feel like how come all these other fights that the fans would probably prefer it's just so hard like Salido he fought Orlando Salido in a couple years ago and I'm gonna pull it up to find the actual year but Lomachenko that's his first and only loss as a pro he fought against Orlando Salido and hold on I'm gonna pull this up so Orlando Salido fight okay he has nine fights he fought Salido in March 1st 2014 right it is currently june no actually it's july day before fourth of july july 3rd 2017 so he fought over three years ago he fought salido again march 1st 2014 so you mean to tell me with all the people that salido has since fought there is no way that fight could have got made you know what i'm saying like that that to me there's a disconnect there because it doesn't make sense that everybody who wants to fight Lomachenko, a guy with nine fights who's skilled as hell and stuff like that, it's the fights always fall apart. Like some of the best fights. And I'm not trying to say always because Lomachenko does have solid names on his resume, a few, but he only has nine fights. But like rematches with Salido, how, how is it this hard to make? Yet Salido's making these other fights and I never hear of any of these problems. So for example, since the Lomachenko fight, Salido has fought one, two, three, four, five times. Five times since that point. And two of them were against Rocky Martinez, who was a champion. And then he also fought against Francisco Vargas, who was another champion. So those are, those are three fights with two champions. 
and somehow, some way, those fights got made. But every time Salido tries to fight with Lomachenko in a rematch, for some reason, oh, Salido wanted this, and it fell apart for some reason. The Reagan out fight, oh, it fell apart for some reason. Like I said, it's, it's, it makes it harder and harder to buy. Like, but Miguel Mariaga, who just came off of a loss, that fight was super easy to make for ESPN. I mean, what fighter would not want to fight on ESPN, especially seeing how the Pacquiao horn numbers did great. That's full exposure. So to me, it seems like there's more factors at play. Like, are you not trying to pay them what they're worth? Are you trying to give them too little time to prepare? Are you trying to use too much A-side lever? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you disrespecting them? And the, It just seems like there has to be more to it. And the other thing I got to talk about is in this interview with Hoop Jab, and I'm going to play a clip, but watch the full interview on Hoop Jab's page. Bob Arum says the Salido fight fell apart based on Salido. He got injured. He said, we agreed on the money and Salido got injured. Listen. What happened with Salido this time around? In Salido, uh, we had a negotiation. We finally agreed on a price. And then he tells us, well, I hurt my hand and I won't be able to make weight for August 5. So, we, you know, we're, we're, we're taking boxing to a new level with ESPN. So we just wiped him out. We so got Mariaga Mariaga. on the back. So you guys heard the clip. Shout out to Hoop Jab again. Link in the description. This is my thing. Aside from the same fighter in all these fights, the bigger fights are being becoming so hard to make. You know what I mean? It reminds me of like, let's say Mayweather Pacquiao. Those two were having trouble making that fight. I get that. You know what I mean? Certain fights, Pacquiao didn't want to do drug testing, whatever. Cool. But Pacquiao was still going on to fight other people, the Shane Mosley's, and he didn't have problems fighting those people. You know what I mean? Maybe because they weren't drug testing or he agreed with that they, they conceded and they were the B-side. I don't know. Same thing with Floyd. Floyd went on. He was fighting Cotto and other people, right? Mosley. So I get that. Maybe one particular fight is very hard to make for whatever reason. Canelo Golovkin. But... Not every single fight, every single major fight where there's a disconnect. But what you guys just heard the clip, Bob Arum said, Salido agreed. And just like Tupac said, he says, keep your eyes on the prize because the ride gets tricky. And you guys got to look at the clues. Like this this boxing game is sometimes more than meets the eye. And I'm going I'm to I'm flip this on you guys. And you can say I'm lying, I'm racist, I hate this fighter, that fighter, all that stuff. But just analyze what I'm about to say to you. You just heard Bob Arum talk about why the Salido rematch broke down and why they landed on. he. Okay, so Rigging out was bullshit and full of shit. That's what he said if you go watch the interview. Then he talks about the Salido fight. He said Salido got injured and he was having trouble making weight. So this is my question. How come I'm reading articles and headlines and the headlines read Orlando Salido turns down a whole bunch of money, seven hundred and twenty thousand, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So you know, what I mean, there's more players involved in this game. People, there's like, I don't know, cover-ups or people who are trying to soften the blow, stop the bleeding. Because why is the headline reading Orlando Salido is turning down this money? But Bob Arum just told you in that interview, the per he's he's the man in charge. He's the number one. He's the founder. He's everything at top rank. You know what I mean? He gets the final say. He meets with the fighters before they sign the, the Mick Conlins, of course, Stevenson. So my question is, he's telling us that Salido agreed to the money, but then he said he had an injury and he can't make weight. So why am I seeing websites or videos or, or whatever forums? And they're saying the reason the fight fell apart is because Salido turned down 700000 plus dollars, right? So which one is it? And that's what happens. That's when you gotta you gotta get your forensic files on and do the detective work. You guys Google it. I'm not gonna put everything in your lap and spoon feed you, but just Google it. Google Salido uh, refuses or rejects or turns down 700K or, or whatever. So it's like when you have two stories that are complete opposites, somebody gotta be lying. Somebody gotta not be telling the truth. You know what I mean? So which one is it? Did Salido refuse the money or did Salido get injured and, and couldn't make weight by August so you chose Miguel Mariaga? Either way, one of those stories can't. If they're saying the exact opposite, 
then it can't be real. One of them, like let, let's say, let's say there's a, a guy named Charles Lee Ray. Shout out to the movie Chucky. Charles Lee Ray, and he got in a fight with the rival gang, and the gang members on the opposite side, they say, oh, we knocked Charles Lee Ray out. We knocked him out. And he comes back to the hood and he's like, nah, I didn't get knocked out. They lying, they lying. I got away, they try to jump me, but I didn't get knocked out. So with two varying stories, somebody gotta be lying. You know what I mean? Either he got knocked out or he didn't get knocked out. And again, I'm on the outside looking in, but I still do the detective work. Somebody's not telling the truth being transparent because you can't, like I said, Either he got knocked out or they falsified it and added stuff to it that didn't happen. But two different stories, they can't both be accurate. You can't, oh, I, I got partially knocked out, but I didn't get knocked out. You know, and there's no, you either got knocked out or you didn't. So back to boxing, Salido, did he turn down the $750 or $50,000 and that's why the fight didn't happen? Or was it because he was injured and... He couldn't make weight by August 5th for ESPN or whatever. You guys got to look at the signs. And I'm telling you, new media, tell the truth, tell the truth. I'm telling you, man, this is not a good year for some of y'all casuals. Because every time something like this happens, oh, why didn't you make a video about this? And and as I get deeper in the game, it's it's about respect. It's about credibility. I'm not always right. Sometimes, you know what I mean? I, I've, I've made a video and something like a rumor didn't come true or something like that. I'm good with that. But you don't see me backing something thoroughly and telling you this for certain 100% is the case. So to me, it's a little bit hard to believe that all of these major fights are so hard to make. Rigondeaux, even though he's doing all this stalking and social media, taking jabs every second, he I have a video of Rigondeaux calling out Lomachenko multiple times. He called him out at the round table and called him out at um after i got some behind the scenes stuff with him so to me it's 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 hard to believe that okay maybe lomachenko and ringing out can't hash it out for whatever reason ringing out is a little dude and he he's not at the weight so maybe there's some other issue i don't know but i'll give you the benefit of the doubt for one but not two you know what i'm saying why why is salito's at the weight salito has a win over you salito has fought everybody from juan manuel marquez guaranteed hall of famer Mikey Garcia, who's in a major fight with Adrian Broner. He fought Yuri Yurikis Gamboa when he was in his prime. He beat Lomachenko and was the only one to do that thus far. So why would, would he have, what reason would he have if he's being given an honest, um, respectable offer to not make the fight? If there's plenty sufficient time to prepare and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Check out the interview. Let me know what you guys think. New media. Make sure you share the video, like the video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.